Hello, Shirley Peters here. This is my studio. It's all cleaned up because I've had an open day yesterday and I had lots of groups coming through. It was really good fun. Just a quick view of some of my paintings from past days. I had a lot of work prepared on my, on my desks. Uh, well, when I say prepared, I had work laid out on the desks, as you can see from there. And uh, my landscapes. Oh, my husband made this for me quite a while ago and it's great. It holds up a lot of work vertically. Mm, old camera, which a little bit of a worry, doesn't work. I mean, it works, but it's on tape, so it's hard to capture the images. These are a couple of plein airs that I've done on paper and then mounted onto canvas. That's a very early cricketing montage using an old, uh, some old political themes. And across the top I have mm, my little nippers in Rome, which is, mm, talk about that another time. A model, my husband, myself, and back to my desk. And I can't resist just to see what's happening over the corner here, and that is honey having a little snooze. She's very patient. So that's the studio. Welcome to another video. This time I'll be painting a beachscape, and it will be in a landscape format. And it, it's deceptively simple. It's it's actually quite hard. So I'm doing it on. I'm giving myself a treat by doing it on rough uh, arches, which is uh, fairly easy to use. Normally I use medium actually, the, the, um, the green one, but uh, I've run out, <laughs> so I'm using the orange, and that's the rough. So uh, please, if you like the video, like and subscribe, I really appreciate that. And um, I'll get started with the sketch. I normally talk all the way through, so feel free to <laughs> To scrub forward and uh, fast forward. If you want the picture, um, you can download it for free from my website. Um, I have a special learn to paint um, page on the website where you can scroll down to the last one and that's usually, well in this case, it'll be the last one now until, unless you're watching it <laughs> further afield. But um, I think this is going to be number 14. Anyway, you'll, you'll recognise it. You can download that that photograph and you can do the painting yourself. Anyway, I'll get started. I'll do the sketch and then I'll paint and uh, we'll um, see what comes of it. Thank you. There's, uh, there's just a minimal amount of drawing in a painting like this. Hopefully you can see the paints which are listed below this video and uh, if you click the view more if you're on a computer or the little arrow down there somewhere um, on, if you're looking at it at this video on an, a phone or a tablet and you'll see a list of materials and things and paints that I suggest and my brushes and that way you'll, um, you'll be able to keep up to date with what, what I'm doing. Now, I'm going to start with a straight horizon line and that little headland over there, pretty easy shape. Underneath that, that area there, there is a rock ledge which is kind of in the centre and towards the top of the, well, in a way it's sort of halfway. Mm. I'm going to add a little beach on this side. Just curve that around like that. There's a small man there, and I'll put him in, but I'll move him further into the image. So his, his head or his eyes sit on the horizon, because roughly my height, I guess. And uh, he's a little bit portly, and uh, I'd say he's fishing. I'll put a rod in his hand, whether I can see that detail later, it doesn't matter. I'll put a f another figure beside him, and just so that it's, you know, it's nice to have two. Um, he's got rocks, they've got rocks there, um, near where they're walking. Then it comes out to a kind of a, 
um, a flat area there that is reflecting the dark of the uh, headland behind, in which case I might just bring the headland out here a bit more. That might be better. And there's a sort of a, a wet area there that's rather nice and reflective. Mm. I've already brought it down the page. I tend to um, change proportion quite a bit when I do a drawing, so it doesn't matter. It's not going to be exactly. And you'll see how different it will be, actually. It will be very different. So I'm just doing a couple of lines like that. Birds. I need to keep these in proportion to the, to the, the men. I can't make them too big. because otherwise it will seem a bit odd. They have a shadow under them. They also have a reflection under them, so they're a double, a double whammy item. And of course there's this weed on the beach, which is just seaweed, just lying around. So basically the centre of attention is about there on the picture. Oh, we've got a lovely old big cloud here. Oh, that black is. Oh, that's the. Mm -hmm. I'll deal with that later. Those black areas. So, I'll get some clean water here. Halfway through the painting, I will get up and replace water from time to time. So, what I'll do is wet this, wet the sky. I've got a little bit of paint on my brush which is kind of handy because you can tell where the water is there and I don't need pure white up in that area. Now I'll take a blue and I've already got some paint here in my in my palette but I'll add a little bit of I'll take ultramarine blue and a little bit of the manganese hue and a little bit of purple. Oh, purple tends to come in way too strong. I should have remembered that. Black. So this is going to be the cloud that's hanging around the top here. I'm not. This colour here is quite green, but I do think that's the printer. I don't think it's the, in reality, what the cloud would look like. Darks. I love the way it runs down the page. Over in the distance there, there's some interesting blue. Just sucking that up a little bit. quickly grab some tissues just to stop it running down. It's not so much the colour that spoils it when it runs down, it's just that it, it changes the nature of the paper so you end up with that wet little expanded part. Just putting some, some different colour blues in amongst these clouds. And I might just come back and wet the edges just to soften it up a bit more. Some, I need to wet those. I'll just come in, I'll suck up a little bit of the paint. I don't want to leave any strong colours there though. So over here you've got the definite feeling of rain coming down and I think I might leave that. I don't think, there is a lovely white cloud in there but I'm not sure that I want to spoil that lovely blending that's happened there. While I'm at it, the, um, the headland can go in. It's a dull, it's a very dark green. But I'll just see what, I, what colours I get here. I'll allow for the heads of these men. 
sometimes I just paint straight over but I'm being a little bit uh, careful today I don't know why anyway that's the, the headland over there I won't leave it that green color I'll go over it with the blue in fact I might even go over it with the blue that I've used up here in the sky and that looks very lovely doesn't it that's a beautiful mysterious Hard to say what color, what color you call that. I'll run it right to the edge because I'd, I'm happy for it to blend in with this uh, broody sky. So I'll wash my brush pretty well. I do have a dryer, so I'll put the dryer on this and I'll definitely clip it out of the video because it's so loud. So I'm just going to go over it with a dryer now. One of the reasons I like to use a dryer is to lock it in so it doesn't keep um, blending. I like to sort of suddenly say, okay, that's enough, I like it, stop there. And that's where the dry, the drying helps. I'll just get some more paper. Now I'm going to choose a very pretty blue for the distant water. And I've got the manganese blue hue, which I love. And I've got a teal blue, which is also gorgeous. So, to show you, oh, I'll just do it right here. The teal blue is lovely. Manganese blue, a little bit stronger. So, between the two, yeah, just gorgeous colours. So, what I'll do is start out in the horizon here. work it all the way across um, this is where I'm going to have a bit of trouble with these men I'm going to go straight through them sometimes you just have to make a decision like this and I've still got I've got a little bit of a problem here I've left a tiny bit of background area there um, wet and I didn't want it to run in so I'd rather stop it short like that and deal with it later than have it run forward run down into the into the works. Now I more of this I'm mainly using the manganese blue at this stage. And I'm leaving some white here and there so that it can be used later for um, splashing and whatever, especially on these rocks. Now I'll start adding in a bit of stronger <laughs> Sorry, it's late at night and I'm beginning to lose my, my brain. Um, ultramarine blue, of course it is. So that tuck, tucks in underneath those lovely, beautiful colour. And it's quite strong there, so I'm going to just touch a little bit of purple there as well. I'll put that into that area. I think there's, there might be seaweed or something underneath there, so it's a little bit dark. And then I'll wash the brush quite well to get rid of that purple colour. And then I'll, I'll go into the teal and I'll load the teal up, come back up, put the teal across here, and then come back up into that blue. And then ultramarine again down the bottom here. I'm having a bit of trouble seeing it, it's so shiny. I don't normally paint at night time, but to tell you the truth, I've been so busy lately that I've just had to do this. So I'll just quickly bring that down into this area. I'm going to add the, um, the teal blue again down here. Just can't get enough of that colour, it's beautiful. And then it has to go into that area there, but it'll only be there temporarily until the, um, the sand gets put in. I'll bring that around in sort, of, sort of a circle there. Now I'm going to just absorb that edge. 
so it's not too strong. In fact, I'll put some more water there because I really want that to fade away, that, that blue-green colour. And I might even take it right out to here. Quite interesting what's happening with the water coming around in that way. Whole images in there. I'll have to look underneath. Yep. Okay. Now, the next, mm, what I'll do is I'll be drying this off again. You have to constantly dry sections that you don't want to blend, and I don't want that to blend any more than it's already done, and I don't want the colour that I put over the top to be weakened by. Now I'm going to mix a sand colour, which is quite orange, quite um, uh, golden coloured. Mm, I don't know if it's what you call a straight orange. I think I'll have to add a little bit of red to it. I might add some uh, burnt umber. Now, way over in the distance it's going to be very faint, but the strongest part I think is going to be about here, where the men are walking. But what I'll be doing is I'll go back up into the area up there later. But for this, this time, I'm going to just bring it right around take it up into some of the blue areas I'm going to ignore the birds they get they're going to get washed over with this color and I'm going to bring it round out into that open there into the ocean there I mean <laughs> carefully oops went to a bit too pink on that I, I just dabbed into the wrong colour there. This is okay. So forgiving this rough paper. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful to paint to paint paint with. So this is coming right out. I'm just going to loosen it out into that water. And it could come quite dark in the foreground. And then right across like that. I'll just let that dry out a little bit. I'll get some fresh water. I'll see what's happening to the dog. <laughs> She's making a bit of noise out there. Although I must admit, just before I go, I'm just going to run the um, kitchen paper across the very bottom because I know what, what will happen. This is all going to slide down the page and then it will bounce back if I'm not careful. So I'll get fresh water back in the tea. I'm going to mix up a, a sort of a yellowy blue. I'll just clean that. I'll clean that pan out. It's just lovely. I'm going to start putting it in about here. Just that way, I'm leaving some of the under under colour blue to stay there. I do want that blue because it's reflecting the sky, even though the sky's dark. Just 
going into a, that's a sort of a yellowy colour. I just want to go into a little bit more of the bluey side of things on this one down here. Just absorb that out. Have to use this brush <laughs> just in case it leaves some more marks. And there's a, some more yellow in there, so I'm going to just try and get a very um, lemony side of the green. No, it's too lemon. I think I need to go a pale orangey colour, maybe around there. Yeah, that might be better. Just ticking it over to allow for that area that's been hit by the sunshine. Low sun. No, high sun. <laughs> I don't know. Looks lovely anyway, so I'll just kick that around. Um, got some more sort of darker colours in here that are interesting and they I guess it's sort of like light blue, so I'll do a little bit of um, ultramarine in there. Kind of also a little bit like purple, so I'll just do the blue to start with. Suck it up, dry the brush, suck that blue up so it's not so dark. And then I want to put a tiny bit of purple in. Maybe, oops, too wet. Hmm. Trouble is with purple, you can't you can't trust it. It's going to go funny. Multiple colours. That's basically what you're looking at when you're dealing with this type of water movement. here. Lots of purple in there. Okay. Now I'm going to do some shadow work which means I'll, I'll take the purple and the black that, that were, I'd mixed up for the sky I think it was. I'll add a little bit of burnt umber and I'll just see how dark that is. Okay that's fine. I'm going to put the shadows in around about areas that I know will have um, white gouache put above them. So these are the shadows of the foam. I'll just tap them in like that. Can go over into that area. Kind of a little bit in that area as well. Run them in there. Sometimes I just have to put a little bit of blue in it as well. I can see blue going like kind of in the distance. Oh, it's way too dark, but don't worry, I'll just take that out. You want blue? You got blue. I'll take that out. Look how satisfying that is. It's it's so easy to manipulate. Just go sideways on that. Perfect, really. So I'll just run that a little bit over into that area. Oops, using the awkward shape of the brush. Not the right one for that, but it's what's in my hand at the time. Just get a bit more blue and put it down into this area. So, what I want to do is thin out that edge now so even though it's got the shadows there i don't want that edge there what edge i do need is this edge here that's just beyond the white foam and that's going to be a slightly darker browner color and what i'll probably do is turn my page so that my, because i'm right-handed i hope it doesn't go totally out of the screen let's see if i can make sure that stays in Oh, 
helps sometimes then when you do that to also turn your reference material. Because then you can find that you all have it's easier to match the shapes. And you're not thinking you don't have to think too hard. And you're not not likely to make a mistake as much. So I'll we'll put that like that. I'm just going to bring that across. I'm going to wet it in the middle. And then I'm going to bring it to darker on this side. In fact, I'm going to even put some pink. Bring that back. I'll bring that back. Check the camera. <laughs> Check that I've still got you all in. Let's have a look. Here we go. Oops, sorry about the bumps. Bring that up to about there. That's it. It's only a small square, the, um, the screen. I've got to try and not lose anyone or anything. So this brown, I'm going to just make it a little bit cooler back here. Um, what I might do is just... Hmm, Run a tiny little edge like that and then like that. That might be just enough to indicate that that is some water. All these out of the way. Interfering. Oops. Didn't want that to happen blow out there. Gotta keep your wits about you on this paper. It stays wet for quite a while. You think it's dry but it's not. So that's one of the reasons I keep adding, I keep going back to the um, dryer. In this case I think I can, I can work on the fact that it's still quite wet. Take out a little bit of colour there. Because it's it's a highlight of the, just a little area there, it's just a highlight of, of the sand. Mm. Interestingly enough, I'm going to just add a touch of, I think I need to add a touch of blue to that area. Just bring that around like that. We'll sort that out later. I do like the way this paper blends. I'll just add a little bit more hot air. I'm just going to add some blue over there. I'm not sure if it's if I've left it. Um, I think it's too dark, but uh, I'll just, sorry about my, my finger scratching. <laughs> it's sort of an area that could have been left, but I'll just see if I can pick it out. It, you want it to reflect the sky, but on the other hand, it goes into a bit of a, bit of a dark pool there as well, where it just is dark, wet sand, basically. But interesting, such interesting little pieces of um, colour here. I'll put the blue over there again because I still want it there. And I'll fade it out. I'll fade that one out. The top. Okay. So some dark areas needed, I think, just to balance up. Sometimes it's good to put the dark areas in. Um, at a point where you think um, you just need to add structure to the page and see what's, what you're up to, what's needed next. It's often the darks at that point. Um, often you, with watercolour it's normally light first, then dark, then dark, and darks at the end. Sometimes I like to put them in a bit earlier. Like now, I'd really like these darks to go to the top of this pool. 
and be where the men are walking. And I'll let, just let that blend down. I've got the rocks at the back here to go in. So that's, I'm going to actually try and have them so that they're above, a little bit above the, uh, the water's edge. So that, in other words, it's lower tide than what it appears in this photograph. And I'm just using, there I was just using black here I've got a little bit of uh, burnt umber in with the black. On the front, just make it a little bit wavy. Back can be straight, front a little bit wavy because the water's on this side. A bit hard to know what to. I just put some lines in there because it's just, there's just no information in in the photograph, so I just have to make that up. And just while I've got this burnt umber colour with a little bit of black in it, providing I don't make it too wet, I'm just going to do the um, dark headland a bit darker. In fact, I should add a bit more blue to it because. It's further away, it's not going to be that warm. Well, it shouldn't be that warm. So I'm adding blue, strong blue, and then I'll take it out in a minute if necessary. So I'll wet the brush. And then just see what happens when you add water. It spreads out, it weakens does interesting things. They granulate together the ultramarine blue and the burnt umber um, tend to form little um, little spots, <laughs> granulations. <laughs> there we go. They look very interesting. I'm just allowing for time of night, I'll just do a little bit of fine tuning here on the point so that I don't forget later that I need to clean that up if I do it now. I'm just extending it out, just making a little bit of fictitious rocky rocky formation on the end there. It's always nice. There we go. Now with these rocks um, might just add a touch of blue into the brown that I've already put down and then I'll just wet my brush and go scrub into them a little bit just to give a tiny interest you get little bits of light here and there that make it look like it's textured when I say scrub in I'm actually trying to lift up some of that paint got some dark blue there I don't really know what that's doing it's, it's not making sense at this stage so just color some of that in and then I'll just start sweeping through that area with a bit of a dry uh, a wet brush the opposite to dry brush um, because I'm just sucking that out a little bit. Just dark edges that don't actually make sense when you look at them. They were fun to put in at the time, but now I think they need to come out. And this is what I love about a good watercolour paper. It allows you to scrub things out that you're not happy about. So it's not true with watercolour that you only get one go at everything. You can, you can correct little errors that you make. This one here, this blue I put there, I actually really um, don't need that now. Now that I look at it, I'm quite happy to have the sand go. Um, so I'm wetting that and rubbing, wetting and rubbing. 
And it's just lightening up to the point where it's going to be believable. Okay. Back here again. So by, by doing this in little sections, it can look like the top of the rocks. That's what I'm hoping it does do. And you, leave, you leave a tiny little edge of darkness between the two light parts and that, that looks like the crack in the rock. And of course the further you go away, the more, the more thinner they get. You can do them big and fat down here, but as they get away they're like little, little um, just horizontal rectangles. Okay, I'm liking that. That's good enough. I could keep fiddling around on that sort of thing for a long time, but that's good enough at this stage. Mm -hmm. Now, with these pieces of uh, seaweed, I'll just take a little bit of lightness off the tops of the piles. Not necessarily all over, just here and there, so that they look like this texture something interesting happening. Now how did this go? I let that be and just thought I'd not do anything and just see how I go. But a little bit of, tell you what, horizontal lines through that might help. So I'm scrubbing out a tiny little bit of paint there using this lovely thin brush from Taclon. secret to a brush like this is it just has to be stiff enough to be able to um, stay to work its way into the paper. Now I've got a couple of they're not in the actual the rocks are way back around over that side but just here I've got a couple of rocks that could definitely help the composition just there like that. Now these um, pieces of, I'm just adding black back into them, stripes here and there, that looks like, now the beauty of sand is you can put little spots here and there and it looks so realistic. Going to do a little bit more creative greenery in the water. I'll just see if this is the right brush for it. Sometimes I can start with a brush and then if it's just not working I will I'll say no and I'll move on to another one but I'll just try this brush to start with. I just want to do a couple of crosshatch lines backwards and forwards like that. And getting wider, it has, has to sort of get wider to the front because one assumes it's coming. I mean, it could be going that way too. I mean, you could curve it up, I suppose, in which case you'd take these bottom ones out like that. When I say take them out, I'm just wetting the bottom half of them and letting them run through. And while they're there, I'm just going to put a little bit more, or when I say while they're there, while the water's there. I'll just touch a bit more of that beautiful manganese blue into that area. Once again, crisscrossing backwards and forwards like X's, flat X's. So I'm flattening them out and then lining and then drawing them out like that. A few crosses down there. Okay. Now. There's the people walking, there are the birds, there's the white gouache over the top. They're my three jobs. So I'll do the easiest one first, which is the people walking. And what I'll do is the very, I'll just get a sort of a purpley colour, a bluey purpley colour, and find a brush. And I'll just put in there a shape, fat body, one leg forward, 
one leg back on that one. Same on this one in so much as got a bit of a pop a paunch there, one leg back. Here's the one that I can see, one leg forward. Arm back, holding something. And this guy's just got his arms behind his back, I think, just walking around like that. So once they're in and you feel happy about them, you can then say darken the middle part of them, maybe, like that. And let the it not not take the dark right to the edge. Just let them sit like that. Later on, I might come put a bit of white on them to give them texture. And while I'm doing that, their 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 feet go right down behind that area. Well, that that guy, that this one's further out. And I'll just darken around the base of those rocks. I know I'm getting into that water that water area and I'll put a little bit of blue against that. It's a trouble with a fine brush you tend to you tend to fiddle. So that's called fiddling. I'll just use a bigger brush to get unfiddle that. I don't mind the, the fact that I've put the blue there, it's just the the way I put it in is not good. Right. Now the little birds are a bit of a challenge. They're a, a grey colour. I'll just mix a neutral grey. I'll put a fair bit of blue in that grey because they're very cool. So I'm just going to do, um, I'll do one first. It's hard to describe what I'm going to do so I'll just paint it first and then talk about it. Okay so the wing, neck, head, wing, neck, head, down the back, very smaller, okay. Underneath each one of these birds is a shadow, so I'll get a tiny bit of purple going and put their little shadow in, and the shadow is just a line really, like that. That one overlaps, a bit awkward. Um, those, the shadow is quite sharp, it doesn't need to be blended in. I'll just leave it sit like that for the moment. Now, I think the gouache is the next stage. Just put gouache down here in my holding bay. I've got lots of gouache there and it needs to be wetted up to use. I find it's never strong enough and I always go for fresh gouache so I'm a little bit of a problem user of gouache. So I'm going to use this uh, sable and the sable is um, it's a Holcroft number six. It's okay, it's just okay. It's not necessarily a fat point but it is a stiff point so it stays strong but it's not um, when I say fat, now, what I mean is it's not a fine point and it doesn't have a fat base like the mops do. I'll just start playing around it over here to get the hang of it because you do need to get used to how every time you put gouache on, sometimes it's too dry, sometimes it's too wet. So I like to just play around in a non-conspicuous non non area until I get the hang of it and then I know that it's going to be okay. Because once you put gouache on, to tell you the truth, you just can't really undo it that easily. You can, I might be able to wash it off this paper, but norm, normal paper you can't. The other types of paper I've used, you can't get rid of it once you've got it on. So I've got lots of areas here that are already left white. And it's a shame that I have to, that I need, feel that I need to go over them, but and I probably don't. I'll just see how I go. A little bit of white over the top of these um, rocks, definitely, because that's where the, the water's running over to them. Sometimes you can put a little bit of a waterfall thing happening down. Oh, I need a dry brush for that. So just 
play around with that. That's something I can't teach anyone how to do and I'm not even sure I know how to do it myself. I just keep playing with the white. Um, over here there's lovely um, foam piling up there. Then I'll just take it up onto the top of that mound of water <laughs> over the top of the back in a way. Possibly too strong over that green. I'll just knock it into the green a bit. It has nice little spots here and there. I'm using a dry brush. And what I might do is get rid of that brush. I might go to a, I'm to say a number two, a, a small mop might be easier at this stage. Gives you more control. Now, the next stage I need to do is follow the lines. Wherever I've got these lines going around, they are the um, edges of the water coming up. So I just put dots. I have to make it fairly strong. Not very watery. I've got to make it quite strong there. So I'm just going to put it like a lacy edge. mounded up a little bit thicker down here and I'm just letting the dark the dark area sit underneath it like a shadow some areas are solid solid white and then you break up into very fine little spots and this is where the, gr the uh, dry brush will work just do it nice and Over the back here, I'm going to uh, put the foam that was floating. Now, I did put shadows in before, but they've sort of been washed away with my subsequent colours that I've put over the top, so I'll have to come back to do the shadows. It's quite important that you put shadows underneath things that are floating on water, otherwise you can't tell that they're floating. So that's the white foam is definitely uh, one to be uh, built up and played with. Just on the edge. There. Out here, there's no, um, sadly, there's no trim. It's gone. But what I have got is just the white dots here and there. So I'll put those in in a random way, some big, some small, some can be in little lines as if they've just come, they're draining straight back into the water, I guess that's basically what's happening and they can follow each other, others can be just on their own. I'm just putting on some more bubbles here and sometimes they go through to the other side. There's quite a few, when, when you look at this area, and I'm tempted to bring back the um, the dry brush because ba back here there's just too many um, too small too too many of them. I'll just put some. I'll just make some little areas like this. What I'm basically doing here is just going over my pencil marks. <laughs> Right, I've got some blue, uh, some white on them on them here, and I'm just going to go back into this little pond of water here that I really think makes a difference. Just trace around the base of those uh, rocks. Now that I think about it, probably need their own reflection in the water, so I might just run that down. Then in 
this area over here there's underneath these birds. Each one of them has its its little reflection in the in the wet sand. So I'll get the brown going for those. It's actually more like a an orangey. It's quite a pretty little colour that that um, reflection of the bird in the sand. Hope that works. Now while I've got the white nice and fresh, I have to do the top half of those birds. I'll use my point. I'll start with this little fella out here. Try and get it accurate. But I'm not going to labour. If it doesn't quite work, that's it. It's got to be the way it's done is the way it's done. I'm not can't be too precious with this sort of thing. In fact, basically everything in your in your painting has to be of equal attention. If it's neat and tidy in one spot, it's got to be neat and tidy everywhere. And if it's rough in one spot, it's got to be rough everywhere. So what I'm going to do now is just run a little bit of light down on that. Put some edging around this water pond, <laughs> seeing as a pond now. The figures themselves are going to have a reflection down into that water. Just occurred to me that has to happen. So they can come down like that. That one like that. It's getting a bit fiddly up there. Right, now I've got that purple. While well, I've got it, the moon glow colour, I'm just going to run the little shadows underneath each one of these pieces of flotsam. Moon glow is a beautiful purpley black, purple, yeah, purple grey shade, I'd call it. Doing a few wiggles here too. While I'm at it, you can definitely see wiggles. <laughs> In here, there's wiggles. Add more detail in this area because it's um, the shadows are there. That's basically what I'm doing. Stretch the shadows up into this area. Yeah, around the edges of the of the um, white uh, foam there. Sometimes there's a little bit of a line coming down the beach. And, uh, Where else can I find them? Oh, underneath these. Not so much at the very top there, but these ones back here all have a shadow underneath them. I'm putting it on fairly dark now and I'm assuming it's going to fade a little bit. I'm going to go on the people. I'm going to add a uh, just a red top um, and do a bit of blending. This is called fiddling now, really fiddling. Blending of these shadow marks I just put on them while they're wet. Just getting 
get back to this woman, putting a bit of red on her. I've just had a little minor battery failure. Luckily it was, luckily we haven't lost much. Um, I'm not sure if before the battery failed I had um, put in the legs of the birds. A little bit of white over here. I'm going to stop there though because um, it's interesting enough as it is. It's, uh, it's a lovely beach scene and uh, it shows subtlety which <laughs> for me is, is uh, something I, uh, I normally don't uh, display. I've got the water at the back on the rocks. I've got the little birds standing in the water. A little bit of detail at the front. It's it's less is more type of for painting. So that's about it. I'll come out again. And uh, the original. Fairly simple. But that's my version of it. Well, thank you very much for watching my video. I hope you learned a little bit from it um, and I hope you heard me. <laughs> I do tend to mumble. I, my voice goes down and down and down and then suddenly I, I wake up and say something really loud. That said, so does the dog for that matter. She barked a little bit through this um, video hoping that uh, I'm pretty sure I'll be able to crop it out. <laughs> it's very loud. Anyway, so that's my uh, landscape, I mean beach set. I hope you like it. I'll um, uh, be doing another one tomorrow, I hope. M maybe not a beach scape, maybe something totally different. Uh, maybe uh, a shearing shed, I think. Anyway, if you, um, if you want to uh, be notified when I put up a new one, please hit the subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber, and uh, hit the like button. And I'll see you soon. Thank you.